That's actually why people get married, you know, just so you know. Because this is built into marital vows. I'm not leaving ever, no matter what. It's like, okay, well, that definitely puts a boundary around our arguments, right? Because I can't say every time you manifest one of your flaws, which you're likely to do just as often as me, well, enough of this. It's like, that's horrible, man. If your whole life is, well, every time you get out of line, I'm, I'm out of here. It's like, how the hell are you? First of all, you're not going to admit to ever doing anything wrong. Second, you're going to be on your, you're like a, like a scared cat the entire relationship because, well, who knows, it could just come to an end at any moment. It's like, you know, people say, well, if, you're, if the possibility of divorce is open, it makes you free. It's like, yeah, that's what you want. You want to be free, eh? Really? Really? So you can't predict anything. That's what you're after. It's a vow. And it says, look, I know that you're in trouble. Me too. So we won't leave, no matter what happens. Well, that's a hell of a vow, but that's why it's a vow, right? That's why you take it in front of a bunch of people. That's why it's supposed to be a sacred act. It's like, what's the alternative? What's the alternative? Everything is mutable and changeable at any moment. Well, go ahead. You live, you live your life like that and see what you're like when you're 50. Jesus, it's dismal. Two or three divorces, your family's fragmented, you've got no continuity of narrative. It's, and it's not good for the kids, not by any stretch of the imagination. And so it's a form of voluntary enslavement, I suppose, but it's also equivalent to the adoption of a responsibility. And there's more to it than that. If you can't run away, then you can solve your problems. Because it might be, okay, well, I'm stuck with you. So how about we fix things? Because the alternative is we're going to be in a boxing match for the next 40 years. That's the alternative. So, and you think you're going to fix problems without something like that hanging over your head? There isn't a chance. You'll just avoid them because that's what people do. It's really hard to, to solve problems, especially in a relationship. We're having a fight and I find out that it's, you know, because you're, you were abused by your uncle when you were five or some goddamn thing. You know, it's like, it's very frequent that that sort of thing happens. You, there, there's the partner, your partner's you know, manifesting some weird anomalous behavior. You just can't make heads or tails of it. It doesn't seem related to what you're doing at all. They don't want to talk about it. And so as soon as you bring it up, they get mad. And then you bring it up again, they even get madder and they tell you that they're not going to talk about that or they're going to leave. And so maybe you're really, really persistent because you're kind of a son of a bitch and then they break down and cry. You know, and then they have this horrible memory that comes flooding forward that's completely, you don't know what to do with it, and then you have to sort it out. So you think you're going to do that unless there's a good reason? You have to know, we better sort this out or we're going to be carrying it around for the next 40 years. That maybe is enough motivation so you'll actually try hard to solve a problem. It's a lot easier to say, well, <laughs> sorry, we're not going there. But then, good, you'll have it every day, every day, every goddamn day for the rest of your life. Anyways.